Facebook, Happy New Year, man. What's going on, guys? You know, this trend is on everybody's news feed. I'm sure everybody's tired of hearing the word loom. But I do feel as though I have a responsibility to talk about it, at least to share with some of the people that follow me. You know, my thoughts and what these looms are and what I think you should do. Um, from a moral standpoint, because everybody's talking about it from a money-making standpoint, but no one's talking about it from a moral standpoint. And so I feel as though we have to include this in this video if we want to make it effective so that everybody can have everything they need to know on what this is that they're getting into. So let's start. So the first thing I usually hear about these looms is that it's just like an ASU on steroids. Well, in actuality, that's not correct. An ASU is actually uh, a closed door kind of thing. A loom is an open-ended kind of thing. And so with an ASU, you find that there are people in there that you trust and everybody pays out the same thing until everybody receives their draw. But in a loom, you only pay once and you actually get quadruple on what you've paid. And so the question has to be asked, where is this extra money coming from? Well, the answer is simple. In a loom, the money is literally moving from hand to hand. There's no exchange of value, there's no exchange of services. It's literally me giving you money, you giving that person money, you giving that person money as well. And so this is why a loom is drastically different from an ASU. Because in an ASU, everybody gets out what they put in. Now, just thinking logically, the first loom that you ever engage in is probably going to be the strongest loom. Because in that loom, it's probably going to be seven other people who you know very well and whom you trust. But after uh, every individual gets their payout, that means two more individuals have to come into this loom in order to keep it working and flowing. Now you have to ask yourself the question, who is this that I am depending on now to pay up their $100 or however much y'all decided so that I can get my draw? And this is where the problem comes in for a lot of people because what if that individual behind you isn't doing a good job in bringing those people in? The loom collapses and you don't get paid. Everybody before you got paid, but you got stubbed in the end. All right, so what does this mean about the types of people that engage in this behavior? To the ignorant who don't know any better, you get a bligh. You just figure this is a nice way to make some fast cash, but I'm giving all of you knowledge now so that you can know better. If you are willingly participating in a loom, taking money from people, not caring whether or not the people under you are going to get their payout or not, what does that say about your character? What does that also say about your drive and desire to get money in this form or fashion? You know, we, we live in an age where everybody could use a little bit more in their wallet to pay some bills, to do whatever they need to do. But we can't ever allow ourselves to become blinded by fast money. The nature of fast money has never changed. Ask the drug dealers, ask the number people. It is the same thing across the board. Fast money, as quick as it comes in, that's as fast as it goes out. And I fear for the people that are engaging in these looms knowing what they're doing because you're planting some serious seeds for the future of your finances. God don't sleep. Whether you believe in him or not, God does not sleep. And he's taking note. And in these particular types of situations, when you get your payout and you've, you, you've been done, what does that mean for the people that you brought in under you? Can you sleep easy at night? Hmm? So listen, man. Looms do work. So does drug dealing. So does numbers. So does hard work. You have to determine where you want to put your energy, where you want to put your effort, and where you want to put your peace in mind. Because at the end of the day, whether you make $100, $800, $1,000, however much money you make, it's how you make that money that really counts in the end. Can you feel comfortable knowing that you probably took money from people and you don't even know if they got their share yet? Now, you do have people in looms that coach, that wait around to ensure that their other people get money too. But where does it end? Because at some particular point, the arrow points to you. Yeah, this person brought in that person, and this person brought in that person, and this person brought in that person, and at some point, it's going to land back to you. Do you have the time and the energy to make sure that those 8, those 16, those 20 people behind you are getting their payout too? Come on, man. I ain't got the energy to do that. I know a lot of people out there don't have the energy to do that. It comes from a good place to want to do those things, but you have to understand it's a fruitless battle because you will have to be coaching from now until forever. So that's pretty much it, folks. We're all adults here. I'm not telling anybody to do anything, but I'm just saying consider. Consider deeply what it is you're engaging in. Much like a spouse, much like a job venture, much like an investment, a real investment, you have to think about the pros and cons here. 
not just in this physical world, but in the spiritual world. You have to think about the morality of things. Is this right or is this wrong? Because at the end of the day, we all are going to have to answer for something. All right? Love you guys. Don't forget to like and share this video so someone else can get this message too. All right? Take care.